tonight. Is Samsung buying BlackBerry? More reasons to spend your workday on Facebook and a new Mac that I really, really, really want. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 253 for Wednesday, January 14th, 2015. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Squarespace. Creating and editing your website is easier than ever using their redesigned interface, Squarespace 7. With integrations from Getty Images, Google Apps, new templates, cover pages, and more. Try the new Squarespace at squarespace.com and enter offer code TECHNIGHT at checkout to get 10% off. I'm Megan Maroney. Let's get right to the tech feed. Reuters reported today that Samsung Electronics is making a play to buy BlackBerry for up to $7.5 billion. According to sources cited by Reuters, executives and advisors from both companies met last week to discuss the deal. BlackBerry denied the story, saying that, quote, BlackBerry has not engaged in discussions with Samsung with respect to any possible offer to purchase BlackBerry. Am I the only one who thinks BlackBerry is sounding a lot like Bill Clinton when they say that? Now, let's assume that these rumors are true. The biggest prize for South Korea's Samsung would be patents held by the Canadian company. Samsung could also acquire BlackBerry's attractive Enterprise Services Division, which includes BlackBerry Enterprise Server, Mobility Management Solution, BlackBerry Messenger, and more. A merger would not necessarily mean we'll be seeing Samsung smartphones with actual keyboards, but you never know with Samsung. BlackBerry's third quarter 2014 revenue fell from $1.19 billion to $793 million year to year, way short of expectations of $931.5 million. Shares of BlackBerry soared 30% as the news of meetings and of rumors of the takeover were leaked. Now remember, these are just rumors of a takeover. Facebook today unveiled a social network for businesses called Facebook at Work. The company launched free apps, simply called Work, for both iOS and Android. The service will be similar to the regular Facebook in form and function, although it will be mostly white instead of blue and white. The work version will be available as a section of the Facebook.com website, and users will be able to switch between personal and work accounts without logging out. Although the apps are publicly downloadable, signing up for Facebook at work is invitation only for now. The social network is free and also ad-free, although monetization could come later. In related news, Recode exclusively reported last night that LinkedIn will soon offer features and also a dedicated app for users to interact better with coworkers and colleagues. And yesterday, we talked about a device announced at the North American International Auto Show that could turn your dumb car into a smart car, and I admitted that I am not a car expert. So today, we've invited Tim Stevens, editor-at-large at CNET, who was at the auto show, to give us all the latest car news. Welcome, Tim. Thanks very much. So while you were at, in Detroit, you got to take a look at Ford's new GT and sit down with the company's VP of design. This car so far has stolen the show. What makes it so special? Uh, probably, uh, to be a little bit cynical, the most special thing about it is how it looks. It's an absolutely gorgeous car. Uh, so regardless of your inclination for uh, for automotive things, it's hard to hard to pass that thing by and not to stop and take a look. It's it an amazing car. It is very pretty. Yeah, I, I spoke with Maury Collum, the lead designer of the car, and uh, one of the big things about the car is the shape of the rear end, actually, which is kind of hard to describe unless you see it, but it's actually a little bit more like a formula car. It's actually kind of wide open. It has these buttresses like a Gothic cathedral that kind of swoop up from the sides to support the, the rear wheels. It's it's hard to explain and really difficult to see in pictures, but when you see it in person, it's a very striking car. It looks kind of big uh, from the silhouette, but it's actually a very, very petite car. Uh, very, very nice car. Uh, it's also interestingly powered. It's got a twin turbo V6, which is different from the previous GTs we've seen before, which had big V8s or big V10s. Uh, so a twin turbo V6, much smaller engine, which they wanted to accentuate the efficiency of the engine. It's 600 horsepower from a, a little three and a half liter V6, which is, which is pretty impressive. Yeah, and everyone in the studio uh, is salivating right now. So, that you know that. <laughs> so uh, we expect self-driving cars and in-car systems to be the big thing this year. Are, are those the biggest trends? Are there other trends we should be looking out for? Definitely autonomy is a big thing. Uh, it's one of the things that we'll be seeing a lot of over the next couple of years. And, and interestingly, it's not going to be just an overnight sort of thing. You won't just wake up one morning and have a self-driving car in your driveway. Uh, but as we get between now and, say, 2020 or 2022, uh, we're going to see more and more of those features just come into the cars that we buy already. So we already see things like adaptive cruise control and lane departure warning. And those are the beginnings of autonomous cars, effectively. Volvo, in particular, is really working to just kind of extend 
the systems they've already got in their cars now add a little bit more smarts to them and then turn them into self-driving cars. I think within a few years they'll be selling them uh, at, at a limited basis anyway. Uh, so really the, the research is just kind of filling in the gaps of knowledge and filling in the software that's needed to drive these cars, much more so than building out more sensors or anything like that onto cars. So it's going to be an interesting couple of years as our cars get smarter and gradually we'll just sort of have cars that drive themselves and it'll be something that we won't even really notice, I think. It'll just be kind of a gradual progression. Now, does any of this frighten you, or are you just plain excited about all of it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm a little bit frightened just because I'm a car enthusiast. I really like driving, and so I'm a little bit concerned about what uh, this is going to change with the, the economics of owning a car, whether insurance will be prohibitively expensive if you don't have a self-driving car, things like that. Those are years and years down the road. Uh, but no, in terms of safety, I'm very excited. There are a lot of people out there who are driving who uh, don't want to be driving, who are very distracted while they are driving, uh, and I would love to give them the option to just hit a button on the steering wheel and have the car take over. Uh, it would be a much safer way. For, for me and for you and for everybody else, I think. Right. So all those people you see texting and driving are going to, if you have a free self-driving car, we'll give it to them first. You got it. Absolutely. <laughs> so CNET has another story about how Chevrolet has beaten t Tesla to the punch with their Chevy Bolt, not to be confused with the Volt. What, right. What's the story here? Well, it, they haven't quite beat him to the punch yet. Uh, but they did show off this car called the Bolt, which we definitely had a lot of fun with the name. Uh, and this is effectively, you can see, a, as a competitor to the upcoming Tesla Model 3, which will be their lower cost 200 mile range EV. Uh, and again, the Bolt is about 200 mile range. They set the cost around $30,000, which would make it a little bit cheaper than Tesla's car. And hopefully it'll be out before Tesla's car. We still don't know exactly when that's going to come, but it's probably looking close to 2020 at this point, maybe a few years earlier. Uh, but ultimately, this will be cheaper and more attainable than Tesla. Tesla's car, and it looks like a pretty nice little car. I mean, it's nothing swoopy or exotic like Tesla makes, uh, but it looks like a practical people mover. And 200 miles of range in an EV would definitely change the game quite a bit, something that you could practically afford. You could drive that to work all week, for, uh, for most people anyway, without having to worry about recharging it. Uh, that's a very big thing. Uh, it's just a concept car for now. Uh, the GM didn't say when they're going to be producing it exactly. Uh, but, you know, I'm hoping by around 2017 they could have that in production, and that would be, that'd be a great thing for sure. Yeah. So the Internet was also a buzz today about Google possibly partnering with General Motors, Ford, Toyota, and others to try to get self-driving cars on the road by 2020. What, how are they going to do that? Right. I, I think this is being taken a little bit uh, a little bit bigger than the actual quote. The quote says they're thinking or they're working and they're open to talking to these other manufacturers like GM and Ford and that sort of thing, which is great. And not that they're actually setting up any formal partnerships just yet. So I think that's important to clarify. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, I think that it's great that, that Google's working with them all. I think it's great that they're all working with each other. And it, uh, it was actually interesting to see that Google is actually working with a lot of other suppliers to do this sort of thing. So NVIDIA at CES, for example, had a lot of demonstrations to show off the, the power of their new chip sets and basically when it comes to autonomous driving google's on that as it is uh, audi and mercedes and other companies too and so if they're all using the same basic uh, components the same basic knowledge if they can share that then ultimately the whole industry can get there more quickly and do so in a better and a safer way i think that's good for good for all of us well thank you tim stevens editor at large at cnet what are you working on what's your next big story you're working on uh, I'm working on getting over the flu that I picked up at CES right now uh, and uh, catching up on sleep after CES and Detroit back to back. Uh, but after that, uh, we'll have some updates on the Google Lunar X Prize as ever. That's another thing that I've been covering pretty closely as a big event uh, on January 26th. Uh, so look for some uh, videos and some coverage from me on that uh, coming up in the very near future on CNET. Well, great. Well, get well soon. That was impressive, those back to back conferences. <laughs> take a yeah, rest. Always fun. <laughs> All right. Take care. Bye bye. Now, Google's elite bug hunting hacker team refuses to play nice with Microsoft and a brand new Mac that's a blast from the past. But first, this episode is brought to you by Squarespace.com. Squarespace recently launched the completely redesigned interface, Squarespace 7. Now it's even easier to create your own professional website or online portfolio. Here's why you'll love Squarespace. Live editing on one screen, making changes easier with no more toggling to the preview mode. There are 14 new designs, giving you over 30 to choose from. Squarespace has design templates for everything, including musicians, artists, architects, restaurants, weddings, and e-commerce. Cover Pages is new with Squarespace 7. Choose from 10 new templates, perfect for creating quick landing pages for your brand or your personal identity. You can use Getty Images for just $10 each. You can pick from thousands of professional Getty Images and use them on your site. And social media is built right in. You can link your site to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google+, Tumblr, YouTube, Pinterest, and more. With the portfolio, note, metric, and blog mobile apps, you can make changes from anywhere. 
It's incredibly easy to use. And if you want some help, Squarespace has live chat and email support 24-7. It's also inexpensive. It starts at just $8 a month. And Squarespace takes care of hosting, so you don't have to. Plus, you get a free domain name if you sign up for a year. Start a free two-week trial with no credit card required and start building your website right now. When you sign up for Squarespace, make sure to use the offer code TECHNIGHT to get 10% off. We thank Squarespace for their support of Tech News Tonight. Squarespace, start here, go anywhere. Now on to a few more stories we're following today. Yesterday, of course, was Patch Tuesday, which signals not just the second Tuesday of the month, but also that very special time when Microsoft releases their monthly security updates. Problem is, by yesterday, Google had already released information about the elevation of privilege vulnerability in Windows 8.1. They had released this on Sunday as part of Project Zero. Now, Project Zero, in case you don't already know, is Google's elite bug hunting hacker team whose mission is to disclose vulnerabilities to the software makers as soon as they find them. Part of the deal also is that they wait to publicly disclose these vulnerabilities until after they've given the company 90 days to fix them. Now, they gave Microsoft 90 days, but the Patch Tuesday was just two days, unfortunately, after that. This week, Chris Betts, Senior Director at Microsoft Security Response Center, called for more coordinated vulnerability disclosure and said, although following through keeps to Google's announced timeline for disclosure, the decision feels less like principles and more like a gotcha with customers, the ones who may suffer as a result. Now, this news comes right on the heels of Microsoft's announcement that mainstream support for Windows 7 is officially over as of yesterday, January 13th. Now, that sounds bad since Windows 7 is still really popular and a lot of people are reticent to try Windows 8. But the end of mainstream support simply means that they won't be introducing any new features and that your access to free help and support is over. But don't worry, you'll still get free critical security updates until 2020. And if you want to know the exact difference between mainstream support and ex extended support, read the Windows Life Cycle fact sheet, although I cannot promise that you won't fall asleep while doing so. Google today launched a new education app for iOS and Android, extending the reach of its classroom learning management systems to students. The existing version of Classroom enables teachers to use Google products like Docs and Calendar to assign, grade, and track homework. The new apps let students attach photos and other documents to their homework before submitting it electronically. The desktop version of Classroom has been upgraded with a new assignment page for teachers, providing a single screen where they can now check the status of assignments. Classroom also offers caching, so if teachers or students find themselves without an internet connection, they can still access the most recently updated in version of the assignment information. Google introduced the archiving of entire classes, which moves it from the homepage to the archive and changes it to read-only. Now, in their classroom promotional material, they also said that if kids forget their assignments at home, they can call home and ask someone to take a picture of their homework and email the picture to prove that they've actually done the homework. I'm going to say I don't like that at all because I don't know about you, but the biggest hassle I have at home is not getting my kids to do their homework, but getting them to bring it into school. So no, thank you, Google. I don't need you to be an enabler. You remember the original Macintosh desktop computers from the 80s? I know you do. Well, a German tech firm, Curved Labs, has updated the styling of their original Macintosh into a more modern, hip, and curved design. We, you can't buy this yet, what you're looking at right now, but many of us wish that we could. The 2015 iMac concept with its beautiful curves, thin styling, and aluminum chassis was produced with an internal components of the 11.6-inch MacBook Air, and it includes an i7 processor, a USB port, a lighting port, touchscreen capabilities, as well as a cleverly hidden SD card reader. See, that just says, reads the SD card. It looks like the old floppy disk reader. It's so cute. It also comes in gold, space gray, and silver. You won't find it in stores, but you never know what will show up on a crowdsourced funding site. Or you might just end up getting a clever iPad Air stand. And that would probably look a lot like that. One can hope. Now that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write to us at TN2 at twit.tv and watch live every weekday at 4, 4 p.m. Pacific. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.